Hi guys, it's another Mask Monday. My name's Fawn, this is my channel, and I try to make it a happy place. I do unboxings, I do hauls, I do reviews, and I do Mask Monday. Thank you, Lois. <laughs> this Mask Monday is slightly different for me because I was approached by someone called Christopher from a company called Face Masks Club. It's a subscription box company, and they got in touch and they said, no obligations, you don't have to say anything you don't mean, but would you like to have a box and feature it? And I said, you know what, I would. Now, I'm not getting paid for this, ladies. I'm not a fancy schmancy um, YouTuber, <clears throat> but I did get the box for free. I have been approached to do other ones in the past, and I've just been like, no, I wouldn't want that product, no. But face masks, who doesn't need face masks? So I said, yes, please send it. I'll use one, I'll give an honest review, and I'll let you guys know about it. I will post a link in the description box and anyone that follows that link from me gets 10% off their first box. You get five masks in a box for 9.95 or seven masks in a box for 12.99, which I think sounds pretty good value. I mean, what does that make that? Five masks at 9.95, it's like two pounds a mask, which is a good price. So let's have a look and I'm gonna pick one and slap it on. It's so nice getting something for nothing. So inside it says, hi Fawn, great to work with you. Enjoy your masks. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I feel a bit kind of special. It's really nice actually. It's got nice little pink paper. And then here we go with the masks. So I'll just show the box and the masks. I want to be fair. So it's like, oh, glasses job, glasses job. Let's pick one. Okay. And then I'll go through them properly in a minute. Oh, we've got some, ooh, oh gosh, that looks nice. Um, oh, right. I think I've got a winner already. So I'm gonna go with this one. This one's caviar. Jigot, angels in the sky, caviar, real ampule mask. I am totally up for that. It says it's effective in moisturising and nourishing the skin with caviar extract. It does smell fishy. I love caviar, but it does smell. Um, and Monada Didyama leaf extract. <laughs> um, it's a mask sheet with star anise extract, tangerine peel extract, soybean phytoplacenta extract, pearl extract, and red ginseng extract. Smooth the skin and create healthy, clean skin. Sounds brilliant. Oh, let's put my, my ears on. I tell you what, the weather today, <clears throat> it's insane. I got up really early. Well, I didn't sleep very well. <clears throat> and I got up really, really early. And I was sitting downstairs trying to have a little bit of peace, get, gather my thoughts, you know, figure out what am I going to do today? How am I going to get it done? Just how much am I going to have to do with the kids? I love the kids. You know I love the kids. But blimey, I'm exhausted. Ooh, this is a really gloopy one. It's very wet. Oh, it smells nice though. Oh, here we go. Let's see if I can get on my face right. Oh, come on mask. Come on mask, you can do it. Am I there? Right, let me see. Yes, that looks like eyes, nose and mouth. Yes, right, here we go. It's the big reveal. <gasps> oh, it's so cold, but it is nice. I can smell coconut. I can smell coconut with this mask. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, this is nice. Who did I say this was by? I'm gonna have to look. Hang on, let's see if I can get it all on. Smooth it all down, loads and loads. I like really wet ones. <laughs> I like a really wet mask. Um, I think they stick better. There we go. I think I'm all on. Rub the extras in my arms. In fact, I think there might be quite a bit of liquid in here. Yeah, ooh, there is. I might as well just rub it up and down my arms. Is it gonna stay on for me? Please stay on for me. You know I don't have much luck with Sheep Master, but I do actually love them. I mean, contrary to what people think, I just find them difficult to talk in. <laughs> which is not what they're intended for, let's be fair. So you can't blame the sheet mask, you've got to blame the user. Um, yeah, so that's the caviar jigot one. 
actually got. So let's see what else was in the box. Um, so there was also an av natural avocado moisture mask. A tomato sheet mask. Tomato. I can imagine that would be quite brightening. Do you think that would be a brightening one? Vital and fresh. A, oh, aloe vera. That's good when you've got irritated skin. Do you not find? I love a bit of aloe vera. That was by someone called Pax Moly. And this is moving. <laughs> a real coconut as essence mask. And you know I love a bit of coconut. So that's never going to go wrong. My Juicy Bottle Mask. Oh, I'm going to have to look at that one. What does that say? It's an ampule mask again. These seem to be mostly sort of Asian, um, Chinese, Japanese, but I love Korean. I love their skincare, so that's really good with me. And this one is a, a power ringer mask. Something cyborg. So, there you go. That's the masks. Plenty to keep me going for a month. Moving on. I'm going to have the same problems as usual with Thornton and Mask. Here you go. <laughs> right. I had my first ever post to my address. And it's this really pretty Rendale card. It's actually from Angela, who won my last giveaway. And she sent me a little thank you card. And I'm really so appreciative, Angela. That's really lovely to get something. This is going in my book of memories. Oh. I'm sliding as always, I'm sliding. This is a lovely mask actually, it smells really nice. It does have a coconutty, fruity kind of smell going on. I really like it, right, I'm gonna have a bit. That is really nice. Um, and I also wanted to show you the damage that the little sod bird has done to my beautiful blue cardigan. You'll hear me talk about this in another video because I was so livid I couldn't keep myself quiet. Do you remember this really nice, blue cardigan that I got from TK Mask. It, uh, mask? <laughs> got masks on the brain. TK Maxx, because I was so, so chuffed with this one. I have worn this so much. But Bert has got a thing about fabric. Ever since he was little, you know, if we gave him a blanket, and by golly, we've given him some blankets over the time we've had him, he'd choose it to pieces. And you know, he did that to a throw. And I thought, well, it's very like a blanket, isn't it, a throw? You can't really blame a dog for not knowing the difference. Wore this out the other day. Came back to find he had done this. Eaten a whole chunk of it. Eaten the sleeve. Eaten, I mean, if I wanted a peephole sleeve, there it is. I mean, he has totally destroyed my gorgeous blue cardigan. And the annoying thing is he's done one half. So I've got one half I can look at and think, oh yes, that was a really lovely cardigan. And then I've got the other half that is just absolutely destroyed. I'm so cross with him, but I just don't know why he does it. If anybody knows out there what makes a dog eat fabric and a way to sort of discourage him without, you know, I don't want to hit him or any, any nasties, you know, a nice way. I've encouraged them not to do it. Please do let me know. Um, I mean, that was on the back of my chair. So he's actually, you know, it's not like he's just chewing something that comes into his room or into his bed or he's actually seeking them out and destroying them, which is really very, very annoying. Um, and I've had it five minutes and loved that cardigan. And because it's TK Maxx, I'll bet you a pound to a donut I can't get it again. Because you know what they're like. You buy it when you see it or you miss out. Um, but I will have a look because I love it so much. But yeah, a bit gutted about that one. Why couldn't it have been one of my everything five pounds things? Why did it have to be the 30 quid TK Maxx one that you went for? It's got taste at least. This is nice, you know. It's not, I know it's moving and I'm fiddling. I'm fiddling. I have to fiddle all the time because I can never get them to stay in one place on me. But it's not itching. Not itching at all. And the serum is lovely. It's really wet and gooey and gloopy. I'm, I'm impressed with this so far. Um, if I come in, look at me, look at me. Got to pop out in this weather at some point. Got to take some things back to next. I've just done a next haul. I folded it wrong. I always end up going about with these things, don't I? Um, 
I think as of next week, I'm going to start doing like some of the other girls and actually put the mask on before I turn the camera on. So I know it's in the right place. There we go, that's better. So I know it's in the right flipping place. Um, yeah, I've got to pop out in a minute. I've got to go to Marxies and get some food in. I'm going to go to Marxies because they do the best cooked meats, you know, continental meats. My hubby is a fiend for, what do they call it, antipasta. Is it antipasta or antipasti? I'm never entirely sure. You know, the uh, salamis and, and um, parma ham and all that. He's an absolute fiend for that. And if he hasn't got it, so what he does is, because he works in London, um, he quite often has to leave here at like four o'clock in the morning and he just can't face eating anything. Um, by the time they get in towards London, they'll then stop and get a coffee. But lunchtime, he's, he's usually, or mid-morning, I should say, he's usually ravenous. So he has one of these packs of, um, they sometimes call them continental selections, you know, and it's meats and olives and a little bit of cheese, all in like a plastic platter. And he sits down and has that with a black coffee and, and says, you know, it sort of sets him up, makes him feel not quite so bloody miserable about getting up at four in the morning. Oh, I keep saying bloody these days. Oh. I've got to stop fiddling with it, haven't I, girls? I've got to stop fiddling with it. Um, so that's my rambling. I'm going to go and do that in a bit. Oops. My daughter's back is, what would I say? She's not fainting anymore with the pain. Um, but she is in a bad old way. She's laid out now. I've got some time this morning. Whoops. Um, before I'll take the kids to... Um, nursery uh, at 10 and then I can dive into doxes because I know she's okay I'll take the baby with me but I know she's okay on her own so I take the three kids drop the boys off at nursery take Lara with me I can pop in and do the couple of bits that I need to do and Jamie gets a couple of hours to rest up she is doing better she's not fainting anymore but I tell you what really disgusts me girls I know we're in lockdown and I, I know you know it's considered non-essential you know she's not dying of, of back pain but she's fainting and vomiting when it goes into spasm she's fainting and vomiting which is unusual i would say that's unusual i mean i've had a bad back off and on for years and it can be tremendously painful but i have never fainted or vomited and she's not um she's quite a tough cookie you know my, my jay is quite physically quite a tough cookie so it must be really bad and i mean you can't control that fainting and, and vomiting can you i mean that's not even something you can't pretend that um so Initially, she didn't want to ring the doctor. She didn't want to bother anybody. She didn't want to be a bother. And I said to her, you know, you're not being a bother. This is now ridiculous. What if you've actually heard something that would need medical attention? What if it's not just a muscle thing, which we, we sort of think it probably is? But what if you've, you know, ruptured a disc or something? You know, you really need to see somebody. So, um, Friday morning at 8.30, she rang her doctor's practice. Now, we have not bothered our doctors since lockdown started. Even my mum, who changed practices and has diabetes and has all sorts of things, none of us have seen a doctor face to face in the whole, from March to now. Um, because the GPs are, you know, I don't know what they're doing. I really don't know what they're doing, frankly. Because um, it's not like they've got more patients. I mean, if you've got really bad COVID, you're in hospital. So what's that got to do with the GP? But hey-ho, there may be GPs watching. I don't, I don't upset anybody. But honestly, GPs, I want to know what you're doing. Anyway, so she rang at 8.30 and they said, oh, uh, no, she couldn't possibly come in. But she could have a telephone consultation. So Jay said, fine, fine. How that's going to help with the bad back, I don't know. But fine, um, you know, I'll have a telephone consultation. Um... And you know, he never rang. The doctor never rang. I made her ring again at 2.30 in the afternoon when we still hadn't heard. I was like, you know, that's ridiculous now. It's been six hours. Surely to God he could pick up the phone. Um, and she rang the practice again and they said, oh yes, yes, no, he, he got the message to ring her. Um, they would send a sort of reminder along kind of thing never rang now you know her notes will say they won't say she's got her mother living next door who can look after her children for her her notes say that she's a 28 year old with three children one three and four who is fainting and vomiting from the pain in her back how is that something you ignore how is that not important i don't know i'm having a rant now ladies i'm so sorry but it just really annoyed me and you know you know what us mothers are like 
we'd probably tolerate it for ourselves. See, I can't stop touching this. We'd probably tolerate it for ourselves, but it's unbearable to try, have to try and tolerate it for our kids. Look, I'm going to fold this up, guys. There we go. That is so much better. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so she is getting better. I mean, it's so slow. I've had her on. I mean, we've been doing the naughty thing, the thing you're not supposed to do. We've all raided our cupboards to look for, you know, old painkillers and old, you know, things we've been given for aching this and aching that to try and keep her going. But I mean, what choice do you have, honestly, when your GP can't even be bothered? Um, and they don't want you to go to A&E. I mean, that's the point. They don't want you to go to A&E. And, you know, she's supposed to be isolating because of the children and, and mum being 79. So, you know, well, anyway... That's me having my little tantrum. And I've been very good through lockdown. I have not tantrumed at all. <laughs> I know we're lucky, really. I mean, we're very lucky in this family. Very, very lucky. But, yeah, it just doesn't seem right somehow. You know, with my eyesight being so bad, I'm sitting and looking at this. I look rather like, um, like a rabbit, I've decided. <laughs> Probably doesn't look like that at all. But what I can see, I've got that sort of rabbity look going on. <laughs> Um, I was going to do a question because some of you guys have been good enough to give me questions and I very rarely don't now look at that how good is that for a look um, and I, I don't want to do anything too serious because I've already had a shout um, let me see what shall I go with I think hmm, Cheryl Benjamin asked Five things I couldn't live without, excluding family, friends and essentials. Which is good, because normally when you get asked about five things you couldn't live without, you can fill it with your family, can't you? So it becomes a more, a more difficult question. But five things I couldn't live without, um, and I'm presuming my dogs are included in that, even though Bert right now I feel like I could live without. <laughs> five things I couldn't live without. Well, I'm a real foodie. I'm a real, real foodie, so, um, I mean, my hubby's on a really pres prescriptive diet, really restrictive, even, diet. He's eating the same things over and over again, no variety, none of the things that I like. I've tried to do it with him, to be supportive and all of that. Now I'm just cooking for him and then cooking for me, which is not doing well for me. I'm gaining some weight. I've got to stop it. Um, but I couldn't do anything where you know a sort of food type was forbidden for the rest of my life I'm a real real foodie um books I suppose would be the other one I love to read um I love audiobooks I listen to a lot of audiobooks especially when I'm cleaning and I'm you know getting things done around the house so other people's imagination that comes out in books I just love 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 not always fiction I mean sometimes I like a bit of history and and so on but um yeah life without words can you imagine it? it would be so awful um and what's funny is that my eldest daughter is like me or yes is like me reads and reads and reads and reads and my younger daughter is so not like me she you know can't be bothered to read she's far too busy doing other things so it's funny how different people you know so yeah books food hmm now we're really getting to it. What couldn't I do without? What do I do every day? What do I use? I suppose the internet. I find when I was, you know, when I was acrophobic and when I was housebound, it was my window on the world, uh, especially living rurally. I mean, if I'd lived in a town, it might have been different because I could have sat and looked out the window and seen people going by and, and felt part of something. But living rural like we do, uh, very easy to feel isolated. So it became my absolute window on the world. I could, you know, I could vicariously live through what other people were doing and find people that I wanted to follow and learn about things that way. So I suppose the internet, I think the internet's been a, an amazing thing. Um, I know that, you know, there are negative sides to it, you know, with bullying and, and you know, the social media can, side of things can be difficult. But if you took the social media bit out, which I suppose would be me as well, take that out and just look on it as a resource. Um, you know, you can tap in any country in the world and, and see see it and learn about it and hear the way people speak. And so, so yeah, internet. I love the internet, even though I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I'm really not very good at it. Um, swimming. That would be another one that I really couldn't live without. I love water. I'm a real water baby. 
um i've always felt very very at home in water and in fact I used to swim for a club when i was a teenager um it's where i feel most sort of comfortable really um is in water uh and i'm very very lucky my husband put in a swimming pool for me for my birthday um this year uh well it was the tail end of last year it actually went in because we had it over the christmas it's been a, a you know ambition all of my life to have a swimming pool and i do now have one it's only because we live where we live and we were able to make some huge savings um from city property to country property that we were able and i mean the money we spent a lot of people would have been like i would never spend that on that i'd have an extension or i'd have a but um i love water and i love to swim um so it's always been something you know whenever whenever we moved and i'd look at houses and if there was one that had a swimming pool i'd be like oh that one's got a swimming pool and he just sort of took note of that over the years and was like when we came here he said we've not had a holiday abroad for um 10 years because of my ill health um you know my home became became it was my safety but it was also a bit of a bit of a prison um so he said you know if you think of 10 foreign holidays and add them together and you know all the all the numerous things that we don't do because of my health um and also it is a healthy thing to do so we put one in and funnily enough my hubby who's not a big swimmer swims every single day i mean every single day he's so funny he trots out there he does a, a required number of lengths and then gets out he doesn't really swim for the pleasure <laughs> he swims for the benefits whereas i swim for the pleasure i can be out there much much longer and actually not have done many lengths but i've done lots of farting about and fooling about in the water and i just feel uh replenished and renewed and and so on it hasn't helped my hair <laughs> but yeah so yeah swimming so is that five now let me think what did i say i said internet i said swimming i said food i said books mm. i'm sure i said something else internet swimming food books oh my goodness me i'll tell you something else i could never live without it's my brain <laughs> It doesn't work very well at the best of times and i'm sure i've said five but you know i'm lost now as to whether i did or i didn't so either this will be number five or it'll be number six um and i think that that would be the greenness of the uk i get something from the greenness here there's something about it that fills my innards up city life is nice you know i've lived in in lots of cities i've lived in uh, germany as well as the uk i've traveled and i've been to some amazing amazing places but there is something about the uk we stay green we never get that sort of brown parch well i mean very occasionally we might have a few days if we get a very very hot summer but generally we don't get that sort of baked dry um brown it's been too warm for too long uh, kind of look we tend to stay really really green and i love it i literally i love trees and i love that greenness and sometimes just to feel less um stressed and strained i go and find a tree and i hug it and that sounds so weird and like you know i'm like one of these hippie 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 i mean i am a bit hippie but honestly go and stand by a tree that's you know an old tree now i'm not talking about one that's a few years old go and find yourself the oldest tree you can find and just lean against it you don't have to hug it just lean against it feel it think about how old it is what it's seen what's happened around the world you know during the time that it's been growing and i i defy anyone not to feel sort of calmer and more grounded and more centered so yeah trees and greenness couldn't live without it so that was either number five or number six god i'm useless aren't i at this <laughs> i need like um i don't know i was going to say i need a manager to tell me what to say but then that wouldn't work either would it uh so yeah there's my five things that i couldn't live without excluding family and pets and and so on um 
so yeah i've got lots to do today i've got a busy week busy week ahead of me and i'm hoping to catch up because do you know guys i ordered some things before jay hurt herself and they've all been arriving and i've not been able to film them um i've managed to dash off and do one here and one there but i've not you know i feel really i feel a little bit overwhelmed by it all at the moment because everywhere i look there's stuff um and obviously I don't keep everything that I order because, you know, if I do, um, let me see, I've got well, I've got an Asda one, for example. I've got a Georgia Asda haul to do. And I've looked through the things and mm, there's some really nice things. But until I put them on, and I, it could be that the sizing is all wrong and I won't be able to keep any of it. It'll all have to be exchanged. But in my mind all the while is this, oh, oh God, I've got to do something about that. Oh God, I've got to do something about that. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm going to take this off now. Oh, do you know that was really nice i've got to be honest that was a really nice mask um so i'm hoping i can catch up on um and get you know get back on track i mean my washing i had to put i've got a load of washing in the machine it's on its third time of washing because every time i've put it in and i've washed it i've then not had a chance to get back to it and it sits overnight and i don't know about you but it gets that kind of slightly musty smell so then I've washed it again and today I've just washed it again so it's going in the tumble dryer today Campbell or high water but I'm always reluctant because if you don't get your things out of the tumble dryer the minute it finishes they crease even worse I find because you know they go cold in a crumpled ball in the in the tumble dryer and then the creases sort of get slightly set into it so but I've, I've literally I've got to get back on so first things first kids dressed in school clothes i mean they've got normal clothes on at the moment but they always get tidy for school by tidy i just mean something that doesn't have a little bit of you know chocolate rice krispies on or you know yogurt or whatever they happen to have been finger fooding this morning because they're up at the blinking crack of dawn these kids so um they have one outfit on when they get up at sort of six seven o'clock for playing in because they don't go to, to nursery until 10 and then we change the tops um, sometimes we have to change the whole lot but mostly it's just the tops and give them a bit of a clean up and so on so yeah i'm gonna do that drop the kids off at nursery take lara with me and go to marxies and get a couple of bits done then home here and i may still have an hour in which i could maybe get that asda haul done today which i would be really pleased i should say georgia asda haul done so i'd be really pleased if i could get that done and then i've got to edit this to get it up tonight <laughs> so it's a good job i'm enjoying this girls because it's feeling a little bit like pressure at the minute <laughs> but then you know i think to myself when the kids were young and i was young i handled way more than this i mean at one point in my life i was a single mum because my my marriage had failed to two girls i was doing my university uh, as a mature student and i was working evenings and weekends in a call center because you know I was a single mum and I didn't have a lot of money coming in and I sort of somehow managed to do it and you know keep the house going and, and all that sort of thing I don't know I've slowed down I've really slowed down now whether that's because you get out of practice or whether it's because you do get just too old but sometimes I come in from the kids at the minute and I love them I love them with every breath of my body but I come in and I just my ears are ringing I just need to you know sit with a cold drink and just get myself back together so um yeah I'm getting old guys <laughs> oh well now so that's it I will um I will put the link for the face mask box in I think it's good I mean you know I thoroughly enjoyed that mask I mean that's just one of many but look at all these lovely masks i quite like that coming through my door um there's nothing there mask wise that i think oh i wouldn't like to do that and it reminds you i mean if they come if they land on your doorstep all these different kinds you will actually remember to take the time to have a little lay down on the sofa or whatever slap one on and for 10 15 minutes tune out to the world that we're living in right now anyway i hope you're okay i hope you're well i hope your weeks are busy but with things you enjoy and i will be here every day as normal just the um the quality may not be there but then <laughs> when did i ever have any quality <laughs> okay guys 
I love you all. Be well. Bye.